Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. Easy for you to say. Continue, Easy. Diane Baker. Baker. Continue. <laughs> this, this is what happens when you become a big star on the blue and the gray and a producer for CBS television. <laughs> say it again. Peter Piper, <laughs> Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. Yes. Go ahead. You know the best. Yes. You Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. peppers. How many pecks <laughs> of how many pecks of pickled, pickled peppers, peppers did Peter Piper pick? Now do it quickly. You have to do it very quickly. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. If Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers, how many pecks of pickled peppers did Peter Piper pick? Brilliant! How many chucks could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? He'd chuck all the wood that a woodchuck could if a woodchuck could chuck wood. Now here's the best one. Now here you have to say this three times quickly, Diane. I slit a sheet. Oh no. A sleet. <laughs> I. <laughs> oh no. A sheet I slit. A oh no. A slitted sheet I slit. No. Now you just try no. to. No. Listen, you're a consummate actress. You I should be it. able to handle that. Censorship. <laughs> <laughs> she plays the Northern Mama in the Blue and the Gray coming up on November the 14th on 10 11 Strong with a terrific cast. They're great. Wow. Everybody's I mean, great. some of the really big names in the little cameo roles. How did, how did you get involved in this? Day? Well, I was, uh, happened to be working at Columbia Studios as a producer that year, and uh, the whole series was being cast, and uh, obviously there was a uh, part for me in it. I happen to be there, and you know, when you're close at hand, there's, uh, and they see you, and the agent calls and says, maybe there's something interesting for you in it. I said, wonderful, I'm here, I'll be happy to. So I read the script, and I tell you, I was so taken by the, uh, the eight hours, uh, I couldn't put the thing down. I said, I'd do anything, anything. I don't care if I have one scene in the Oh, picture. so you weren't really going for one role. Oh, no, no, no. You no, just no. said whatever I can No, no, I, I was happy to be a part of it. I felt so good. The other exciting experience was being in Arkansas after mm -hmm. years of not seeing a family in the Midwest. I got a chance to go over the border to Missouri where I have relatives, and it was t two or three days of just delicious visits with family. I literally would love to live in Arkansas or Missouri just for maybe six months of the year. Well, some of your family used to live in Lincoln, Nebraska. Well, my grandfather remarried uh, many, many years ago. Of course, he's passed away now. But he remarried a lady who was from Lincoln, Nebraska, and so her family mm -hmm. came from there, and he lived there for many years. Mm -hmm. Now, so, you're a producer. Isn't yes. that unusual for a, for a female to have the kind of power that it takes to get the, that kind of job done? Well, first of all, power and femininity uh, go together since the beginning of history, so I don't think... <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? Well, I mean, I think women have always had a kind of power, a kind of special power that they, we haven't always uh, used. Uh, certainly in the professional world of, of business. And I think for a woman to be a producer is not so unusual, considering that it's just another step in within an area of a, a craft that we're all working at anyway, such as acting, writing. Uh, now we have few directors. So uh, to produce is not, uh, for me at least, it hasn't been any special There's not closed doors it. with the good old boys getting together and selecting their friends and comrades? Well, be, the reason that may not be true today, as it might have been a few years ago, is because there's so many independents now working that that so-called closed shop doesn't exist the same way it did many, many years ago with the studio systems and uh, the fear uh, surrounding that for any outsider. I uh, found that now you can go off and make a movie, and if and it can enter the marketplace without you having to be a member of the establishment. Where do you get the funds? Well, um, <laughs> in 1975, um, I, I get a lot of it from acting funds, uh, which I use in the productions. When I act in a role, I use that money. I also have uh, prevailed upon investors. In a movie I made in England in 81, um, it's called Never Never Land, and I had Petula Clark in it and Kathleen Nesbitt. That, I had eight investors that came up uh, with money. I went to England with a little suitcase full of money. <laughs> is it your job then to sell them the idea that, hey, I know this is going to work, so they'll yeah, put their money yeah, behind it? Yeah. Then you're, you're really your salesperson in addition. Well, that's unusual for me. I never did speak very much when I was growing up. I was rather quiet. I was saving it all for the day <laughs> that I knew I'd need it. Um, 
I think if you enjoy talking about something, it's as if, for example, you, you're doing something you enjoy. I don't think if I were talking necessarily about me or something uh, about my wo uh, uh, acting, I would be as easy as I am about uh, a subject that I feel as if I'm involved in talking about other people or, or something outside myself. I mean, it's hard to talk about yourself as an actress? Well, in depth, uh, I think talking about my roles or my work or selling myself, let's put it that way. If I were having to sell myself, to get a role. I wouldn't be Oh, that's why easy. people need agents. I think the agents do that work very well for actors and actresses. But for producing, it's the script I'm talking about. Ah, that's outside I'm talking about the project that's once removed from me. Well, how could you, you said you were shy as a child? Oh, I'm very well, How on earth could you not only become an actress, but a producer, and get out there and say, hey, I got a product, yeah. I want to sell it, and Growth, change, maturity, I suppose. Uh, when I first opened my mouth <laughs> and said a few words, it felt good when I had something to talk about. So you didn't decide, I'm going to be an actress when I grow up? No. It evolved? It evolved, yeah. And you're not sorry? No. No. No, it's all wonderful. It's wonderful. We're here in Washington, D.C. with trips been paid for. We're picked up at the airport with limos. I mean, what, where, where else is it, could it be so easy? I mean, it's not so easy. You have to be ahead of a corporation to have that usually. Yeah. But it's wonderful. It's wonderful to, to be alive in a craft that you enjoy and... Uh, Do you have a family, uh, Diane? No, I don't. It makes it easier, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I have a, a man who is the same, does the same work as I do, and we just, we're very compatible. And at the moment, we're so busy that a family would not be, mm -hmm. would not be appropriate for the child. Well, we, we, we don't we'll worry about, about that today. That. We'll worry about that tomorrow. The blue and the gray today. That's right, right. What you, what's your next project after blue and gray? Well, I'm producing a four-hour miniseries for CBS. I, 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 we're waiting to see about the license fee, uh, waiting to be picked up. And I'm doing, uh, in 84, a six-hour miniseries, which I'm producing for an uh, uh, ad hoc network, uh, Operation Primetime, that will be done in England. So I'm uh, very excited about the, the lifestyle that's coming. Well, we're very proud of you, Diane Baker, and go for it. Thank you. you. The most Peter famous. Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. As soon as you get that right, <laughs> you're going to be a star. Oh, okay. no, I, I hope so. Producer. We'd love to see it. Thank you. And Diane Baker is her name, and watch her in the blue and the gray coming on 1011 Strong, November the 14th. It stars. Thanks again Thank very you. much, Diane. And we'll be back as 1011 Morning continues.